Happy Friday, Pat. It's been a while since we've been on, thanks to my connection difficulties. Yeah, it's good to see you, buddy. I mean, I know you've been up in the uh, Northwest, and I've been kind of missing. I've been kind of itching to get back on here, talk you know, talk to people, and uh, you know, talk real estate, talk rates. It's been a couple of weeks now. I've, I, I kind of miss it. <laughs> yeah, we're we're not doing live today. We're doing a recording, but it's uh, called a premiere, so we'll be around to be able to answer questions that come in on the chat. But I don't trust my connection enough today to because to this is where I'm at. And uh, we have a little family reunion up here every Labor Day, and I'm able to make it this trip. So I am the short RV amongst these giants. So Vapor. this yeah, is a I cousin, know. And that's my brothers, and that's another cousin. So, And then we have uh, two more coming. So oh, That's cool. And, and we're on a lake. So it's a that's very awesome. fun family, and we're going to have a blast. So, Well, but, I'm wearing uh, my... I'm wearing my Wisconsin shirt for the fact that this is the first week of the Luke Fickle, Wisconsin Badger, new era in Wisconsin football. So I'm excited about Wisconsin uh, Badger, you know, college football kicks off this weekend. So, Gee, I didn't know anything about that. So. Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So we had so, a little bit to talk about because there have been some, been some changes. I want to start with my handy dandy seven day moving average pad because I want to show this is May right here. And we have, oh, I have to share it. So we haven't budged. The, the black line is number of homes under contract. <laughs> haven't budged an inch. And then if you look, if you go back to last year at this time, it's about the same in volume. It's lower. This is mm -hmm. Labor Day coming up right here. So next week, we're just going to ignore those numbers. Then we started this yearly decline in homes under contract. And then the, the gap between the two and new listings was pretty huge. Then it tightened up. And we've been tight for the latter half of this year. So this new listings coming up is really nothing to, to get excited about. But what mm -hmm. I wanted to look at was because we've had some comments to go, well, you know, it's seasonal. So I like to look and go, well, I don't think so. Uh, this is a busy chart, but this yeah. I'm going to go just to August here. See that orange color right down yep. there that I'm highlighting? I'll highlight it with the pen here. But it says 6207 new listings for the month compared to last year at 9712 and 10,541. So that's not seasonal because that's last August, August before that. So um, it's definitely slower when it comes to homes under contract that at any time that we've had. But again, tooting the same old horn, the new listings are so low and availability is so low that they're still they're still moving. We're still cranking off between 75 and 80 percent of the new listings on a weekly basis. So I yep. thought, well, it's time again to look at closings per month over list price. And here's what I have. So it actually went up to 22 percent and creeped back down to well it's still 22 percent, which is kind of surprising talking about mm -hmm. rates you wouldn't think that would happen but then when you get the devil in the details the majority of these closing over list price are in homes 300 to 400 thousand of which there aren't a lot left mm -hmm. so 28 percent of them are in that price category four to five is 23 percent and then when you get down there the average closing over list price is still only five thousand dollars so that just may be closing cost contributions that they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're offering $5,000 more for the property on a average and asking them to deliver $10,000 for a rate buy down. That that could be what's going on. Um, yep. Not sure, but it's not, um, it's not going away. Now I took a look the other day at foreclosures and that's the same number that we've seen all year. There's just nothing. There aren't yep. any. So it's it's slow. And I expect it to be exactly like this through October, November, and December. Only November, December, slower. But I don't know how much slower than 2,500, 2,600 units a week we can get mm -hmm. outside of just the huge dips that we have at the holidays, right? I agree. 
but we're insanely in interest rate sensitive. And that's what I want to look at with you today. Cause I also don't see us getting a rollout of relief on rates anywhere the entire year. And this article that came out this morning said music to the feds ear analysts react to the jobs report. And uh, what did you see in the markets? Well, we got basically today we had kind of a muted day. I mean, right now we're down nine basis points on the five and a half percent. Five and a half percent coupon. The U.S. Treasury is up nine nine basis points of four eighteen. But you see that you see this chart. This is these are rates. Uh, I usually flip it around. You know, have, have prices, but these are rates. And this is from you know we had this run from May eleventh to the topped out August twenty second. So May, June, July, August. You know, basically the last three and a half four months, it's been this grind up. You know, we get, we have a rise in rates and then a little relief, and then we have you know, we had. We based out here a little bit and then we rose again and we had a little relief. That's what I'm saying is, you know, if you have a, a contract, you know, within 30 days, once in a while, that's that's why I try to take pride in locking people, not just your typical call center where they lock you for 30 days and they don't care because, you know, you see right here, this uh, right, this, you might you know, see right. I don't know if my mouse is coming up, but we had a spike and then we had a little re reprieve. I mean, that's, Within January, let's see, June 28th to uh, July 17th, you know, you had three weeks there that, you know, the rates rose, but then they kind of came back down for about, you know, 10 days. So, you, you you know, the typical client might be able to save, you know, on a $400,000 home, you might be able to save a couple thousand dollars just by being smart about it sometimes within that 30-day period if you have to lock. But anyway, to get back to rates, though, I think we saw a top here. You know, a four, you know, four thirty, four point three six on the ten year. Now we're seeing a little, you know, comeback. And the job report, basically, the job market's a lot slower than it it's really being presented. I mean, Barry basically said um, in his update, his morning update that I, you know, look read up. You know, he said that Bureau of Labor Statistics said there's one hundred eighty three thousand jobs created in August, which was better than the estimates of one hundred seventy thousand. But another month under 200,000, he said there's big revisions in the last previous two months. June was revised lower from 185,000 down to 105,000, while July was revised lower from 187,000 down to 157,000. So, I mean, basically, he said the total combined re revision was about 110,000 jobs. And so, I mean... And he said he won't be surprised to see a downward, more downward revisions to these numbers that we've been seeing. And um, it said June was originally 209,000 and it's been cut in half. And he said July and August will probably be likely revised also. So, you know, the muted, there was a muted action on the market because I think, you know, the average trader is kind of starting to see this. You know, these jobs. I don't follow the labor market that closely. I see that we came up to 3.8% and they were projecting 3.5. So the general feeling is, well, we're heading in the right direction so therefore maybe there won't be upward pressure on rates anymore they're looking more at the trend than the actual mm -hmm. number yeah. 3.8 is still incredibly low and what kills me is that every place i've been has a help wanted sign i went to a safeway store fish market was closed understaffed it said Went to a restaurant. There were 10 of us. They said, it's going to be an hour wait. We looked inside the restaurant. Most of the tables were empty. They just didn't have enough staff to help us. Yeah. Went to take a ferry to Seattle. The runs are like 50% of what they normally are. They've got boats just docked because they don't have people to run the boats. Those used to be the most coveted jobs up here in the Pacific Northwest. And I saw that when I was traveling up here in every state, everywhere you went, help wanted. So I don't get it. Um, Are we if, just getting know, lazier? <laughs> I think so. I, I I think I think the age group that normally fills these jobs just doesn't want to, and I don't know where they're getting the money, um, or if they're just staying home. But um, you know, the people that normally work at the grocery stores or the restaurants. I mean, you know, when I was growing up, a grocery store job was really good. Oh a, yeah, you were oh, in, yeah. I mean, you were inside. I, I had buddies of mine that had grow job growth the same way. You know, I had a couple of buddies of mine working at a grocery stores. I'm like, dude, I wish we could get a job there, you know, because I was on the golf course working, 
for like uh, the minimum wage was like two dollars and sixty five cents back back then. You know, when I started when I was about eleven and a half, twelve years old, and you know, I worked the maintenance crew out, out in the golf course. But uh, my buddy was working at a grocery store. He's bagging. He was lo- having loving life. Yeah, I liked it. Um, like I say, it was inside. Your hours are flexible. Um, but you know, right now you just don't see anybody filling the jobs and, and yep. every store I go into has a help, help wanted sign. There's, there's posters everywhere, all over town. And, and I see that everywhere I go. And then, and then you'll see somebody standing on the corners, you know, asking for money. A guy, well, go to home Depot. They're right down the street. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. But, but I, so I, I'm looking at, I know that the central bank wants to see some, um, more, unemployment in the labor market because that'll be less consuming and less inflation, but it's the shelter number that I actually pulled up a chart and see if I can find it here. And, uh, it was showing the shelter number for, uh, as part of the inflation report. And this is from the people in, in BAM and bear with me while I get this. Here it is. So you can see this light blue line here. It shows housing is way up way up here and my red pen is not going to work on this browser, but it's way up here, which is almost annualized at 8% from a year earlier where everything else is coming down. Like core goods is well below 2%. And you see that core services minus housing is about 4%, but it ticked back up a little bit. Core PC and E PCE went up. So these are the real numbers that they're looking at. And housing is a big driver of that. And that should be kind of a warning sign if you're expecting rates to come down, because I just don't see rates coming down as long as this number remains up there at almost 8% versus last year. Well, but yeah, Barry is, but Barry Habib is saying that the feds are still looking at uh, older numbers on the, on the housing and that they are, they are starting, you know, you see that break in the chart. That's what that's what Barry's looking at is that 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 decline, and how, they're not. How, uh, so he's saying it's it's coming down. By the time it gets to yeah. their target level or close to their target level, they've probably overshot. They're going to overshoot. Yeah, he's saying he just they're looking at the wrong numbers. I mean, like I said, Barry's not always. I I put a lot of credence in Barry. I mean, he's not always right. I mean, he's got I think the basis of it. He just and I believe him that the feds are just uh, behind the eight ball and they're just trying to prove. You know, they weren't the tough guy the last two years. Now they're trying to prove to be the tough guy. And um, I think they're going to overstep the boundary because obviously you've got, you got credit tightening. I'm, I'm hearing from different people. The people on the street that I'm talking to, agents, uh, buddies of mine that run some pretty big companies. He's, I got a buddy of mine. I think I mentioned this. He's got a chip company, a p- potato chip company, a sweet potato chip company, looking for $10 million in financing. He can't get he great numbers. The company's blowing the, the roof off the company. I mean, in terms of revenues, they're having a hard time finding financing and they're in the, you know, looking for $10 million. You're seeing credit tighten. You're seeing obviously uh, the student loans coming due here in the next couple months. Um, you know, interest rates have gone up on cars. The banks, obviously you got Basel three, you know, the banks, you know, the federal re- regulators are looking at tightening up, you know, having the bank shore up their capital, capital structure. So they're going to be, um, talking about that. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of different rumblings of all these little different people I talk to that things are not as rosy as, as you know, the, our administration says it is. Are you expecting tightening in the mortgage industry? And if so, what kind? Uh, not, I mean, um, not yet. Well, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, can, you know, the, the mortgage banks don't really do it. Freddie, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac might tighten a bit, uh, you know, they might, when they tighten, they typically, you know, run for desktop underwriting. When I run a program, they might let a, a file go at, you know, 47% de- debt to income ratio, but then this, <laughs> maybe a, a week later, two weeks later, run the same file just before closing. And all of a sudden it's like, nope, not accepted. It's like, what? Nothing changed. So they can run yeah. the different algorithms month to month. They change, you know, that I think, I think the banks are looking for deals. Uh, I haven't seen any, anything saying, oh, we're, we're not taking deals because the credit's tightening up. They they want deals, but I think it's Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that are the government behind the scenes that's kind of tight, put you know they might tighten it up. I haven't seen that yet though, really. Okay, yeah, so, I'm, I'm. I will tell you comments say this. Of saying the credit's harder to get, but in the housing yeah. industry, I haven't in lending, I haven't seen that yet. 
I've seen it in the credit on the commercial side, you know, the, you know, small banks, you know, small businesses. But in terms of the average, I haven't seen really anything or heard anything that, you know, the average Jim and Jerry, you know, Jim and Jane Smith, you know, they're having a hard, you know, hard time, you know. Um, but I, I firmly believe, you know, things have been slow here. I mean, it's been slower than normal. But um, once again, I think rates. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back. Speaking of rates, let's pop this up real quick. Pop up my screen. Yeah, you'll have to share it. Oh, I didn't. Sh- oh, really? Oh, crap. Okay, hold on. My bad. I, I, because I got kicked off probably. Yep. Um. Okay. There we go. So, I mean, right now, um, I'm seeing right now. I mean, uh, for five percent down, four hundred, four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars purchase, five percent down loan amount of four fifty-one. I mean, we were. The last couple of days, we've seen some relief because we were sitting at six seven point six two five was a kind of a cost of a thousand dollars or so. Now it's a credit of twenty four hundred dollars. So rates have kind of we're sitting around seven and a half, seven and five eighths. They kind of floated down to about the seven and a quarter, seven and eighth, seven and a quarter range the last you know week or so. So I mean, they're still obviously over seven. You know, I'm sure some other banks are higher in the high sevens, but um, I really believe you know that once again repeating that once survey that I saw a couple months ago in the uh, in this publication saying that 70 percent of the people are waiting for rates to go down to five and a half before they buy I just once again I think right now is the buy low sell strategy buy low sell high because nobody's really out there looking if rates get do get down you know we saw this in April May when they start going down you get those bidding wars and it's just gonna it's gonna offset you get any, any type of bidding war it's gonna offset what you've been waiting for on the interest rates yeah, but you know, that's, kind of, uh, that that's the opposite thinking in my head, though, because but the Fed knows that. I mean, they know if it gets back down there, are they? So they're going to see the inflation number on housing come down eventually. Well, if they lower it, and they're not just looking at housing when it comes to the overnight rate for, for yeah. the central bank, but 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 they know that that's going to reignite housing. So you know, that's just one of the things they got to watch. That's that's the little thing in the back of my brain that goes, nah, that's going to make them hold back. I don't know. Yeah. I just, and I, I don't know what it's going to be. So I'm just going to watch it and we'll, we'll yeah. share it here. So I just, um, the feds are, I think they're just, I uh, once again, not to be Debbie Downer, but you know, I think they're focusing too much on trying to control housing. If they are, you know, that, that's not their, that's not their job. You know? Yeah. It's a, uh, I wouldn't want their job. Um, Cause yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it uh but, I, anyway. maybe the perks are nice who knows well yeah. well pat i'm gonna get uh back with the family here and uh get out there playing some cornhole uh it's, it's interesting it's kind of windy up here right now and fall is in the air i'm seeing leaves starting to fall off the trees and turn color so i know it's time to turn around and come back to arizona i saw that you had a really brutal storm there last night oh terrible uh, so terrible. a lot of damage and stuff so Hopefully I don't run into those pulling an RV through any states. I don't want it to tip over. So <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, so but thanks well, for joining week, me. Everybody. I will see you. I'm going to be on Monday morning. And uh, beyond that, it's just one connection at a time. <laughs> yep. All right. All right. See you, pal. See you, buddy. Bye.